Today we're getting into the latest Tesla news, including competition growing for an affordable EV, new Tesla safety achievements, Tesla's new twice as fast superchargers and more, so let's get into it. First up today, the Tesla Model Y has scored well on a new safety test from the Insurance Institute of Highway Safety that focuses more on passenger safety. The updated test involves a child-sized rear passenger dummy in addition to the driver dummy. The Model Y, Ford Mustang Mach-E, Ford Explorer, and Subaru Accent were the only four midsize SUVs to earn the top rating of good. 13 midsize SUVs were tested in total, and the consensus from IIHS was that most of them offer inadequate front crash protection for passengers seated in the rear. The Chevrolet Traverse, Toyota Highlander, and Volkswagen Atlas earned marginal marks, and the other half of the cars tested were rated poor. The only vehicle to get the top rating in all 11 categories was the Mustang Mach-E. The Model Y was close behind it, getting top ratings in all but one category. Rear passenger restraints and kinematics. It earned the ranking of acceptable in that category. They report that it still provides solid protection for rear passengers, but the rear dummy's head approached the front seat back, which increases the risk of head injuries. Almost all the vehicles tested received top ratings across the board for driver safety, but only a few kept those standards for passengers. The Model Y remains one of the only vehicles to earn the title of Top Safety Pick Plus from IAHS, though. The IAHS has also made the requirement for the Top Safety Pick Awards more strict this year, requiring better side crash protection and improved pedestrian crash prevention systems. While Tesla often excels with crash test safety, they might have a new issue with security that they may need to patch. Two men in Vancouver seem to have actually accidentally driven each other's Tesla Model 3s. Somehow, the app allowed them to open and then drive the wrong vehicle. The cars were parked on the same street and looked very similar, so when the first owner went to retrieve his car, he didn't realize it was the wrong one, even after driving it for several hours. Then the second owner did the same thing. He only realized it was the wrong car after driving around for a while because he remembered he had a crack in his windshield that wasn't there anymore. Thankfully, the owner of that car had left a prescription in the vehicle with a phone number on it, so the two were able to get in contact with each other and swap cars. Cars. While this story does have a happy ending, it could have gone a lot worse, and it begs the question, how was this even possible? Tesla says that they take data security very seriously, and they recently created a new support page acknowledging owners' growing data privacy concerns. Since Teslas are so interconnected, and a lot of vehicle functions use the internet, a lot of data gets transferred between you and the car, as well as between you and Tesla in some cases. Some have worried that might lead to the sharing of personal data to the company, a leak of personal information, or an easier ability for vehicles to be hacked or then stolen. But these cars actually weren't hacked at all. Tesla says their privacy protections go beyond the standard, but the standard they're referring to basically doesn't exist yet. This is a new issue that car makers are having to deal with, and we're reminded of that when it comes to something like this. That said, we haven't heard about this happening anywhere else, so we're not entirely sure if it's legitimate, and it's hopefully just a one-time fluke if it did happen. Next up today, we talk a lot about Tesla's advantages when it comes to charging infrastructure. Their cost of install, reliability, ease of use, and more blows the competition out of the water. Just recently as well, we saw Tesla walk away from $6.4 million in state funding in California because they don't want to comply with payment requirements at the charger level. Instead, they want everything handled with ease through their app. This comes at the same time that they're opening up first superchargers in the US to other EVs with their Magic Dock. So far, they have been opening up V3 superchargers, and these are the fastest chargers Tesla has available in the US. They support speeds up to 250 kilowatts, which is incredibly impressive, but other faster chargers already exist from other companies. While it's hard to truly find a charging stall operating properly at these speeds, Electrify America and others have chargers up to 350 kilowatts, and many EVs from companies like Kia, Hyundai, GM, and more can support these increased charging speeds. The question then has been, how long until Tesla improves their charging? Most are fine with 250 kilowatts, especially since it's delivered reliably, but technology is always progressing, and faster speeds will be necessary for larger vehicles like Tesla's upcoming Cybertruck. That's where Tesla's V4 superchargers come into play. Over in Europe, Tesla has officially opened up their first supercharger location with their new upgraded V4 superchargers, and they bring many improvements. For those charging at these stalls, they have not seen an increase in charging speed, but this is largely because Tesla vehicles themselves are limited to 250 kilowatts. In turn, these stalls have likely not been unlocked to their full potential yet. However, in the meantime, quote, stalls are equipped with a longer cable, providing easy access for all EVs. Tesla also added, currently V4 stalls are only open to Tesla vehicles as we test and evaluate performance. 
sites. We will soon welcome all EVs at this site and open new V4 sites across Europe. Here's an image of just how long these cables are. They aren't going to reach the front of a car that's backed in, but they will certainly give much more flexibility in the future. It should be enough to solve most charging issues related to charge port location that we're starting to see in the US. Stephen Bink got some great photos of these chargers as well, showing what they look like at night and the design of the handle. Worth noting, in this market, CCS is standard for Teslas, so when these make their way to the US, we'll likely see Tesla's connector along with a magic dock integrated into the side of this stall. Here's another great example of the charging cable reaching the side of a Model S. Clearly, if the situation were different and it was necessary, this would also be able to reach a backed-in Tesla next to it. In any case, those are the improvements we're going to experience right away with V4 chargers, but the real important thing is that these are future-proof. A photo of the back of Tesla's V4 charger shows just how powerful it is. These V4 chargers are rated for a voltage of 1,000 volts and a rated current of 615 amps. As noted by Electric, this could mean a max power output of a whopping 600 kilowatts. Quote, the top rated output is rarely something that is maintained or even achieved, but theoretically that's what the new supercharger V4 can do. So these chargers are absolutely built for the future, starting with things like the Cybertruck. The Cybertruck is supposed to be coming with the same one megawatt ultra fast charging tech that the semi has, meaning that working in tandem with better V4 chargers, we could see incredibly impressive speeds from Tesla. They specifically noted at the semi event that V4 charging cables use a new cooling technology, increasing amperage, and this should be utilized with the Cybertruck and V4 chargers working together. Long term, it could mean that we see something like 500 kilowatt charging speeds in future Teslas, reducing charging time to well within reason for any road trip situation. It will also help with larger vehicles like the Cybertruck that need more charge and thus must charge longer to go the same distance. For now, we've only seen Tesla install V4 stalls at one station in Europe, and their rollout may be slow in the US, but we know what this change is bringing, longer cables and in the hopefully near future, even faster charging speeds. It's possible that within the next decade, current V3 chargers are considered the slower option on a road trip, but we'll have to see how this all develops. Next up today, one of the most important goals for electric cars is the affordable electric car. Once truly affordable EVs arrive, it will make a huge impact for the average consumer choosing to go electric. Tesla has talked about their $25,000 EV for some time now, and recently held their Investor Day event where they spoke in depth about all the ways they are cutting costs and optimizing for their future Generation 3 platform. This is a platform to make multiple vehicles on and should be what brings a vehicle in a lower price point, hopefully $25,000. While Tesla has talked about it for some time, they haven't unveiled what the vehicle will look like. They don't usually unveil concept cars and instead only unveil cars they actually plan to make, although I suppose you could consider the Roadster a concept car at this point. In any case, this week VW unveiled two new electric vehicles, and it's super interesting to see the results here. They unveiled the ID2 All, which is their 25,000 euro electric car. The ID2 All gets up to a 279 mile range and is supposedly going to start under $27,000. VW announced the ID2 last spring, and there were a lot of similarities between that concept and the VW Golf. Now the 2 All seems to be maintaining those similarities. This one will be cheaper than the recently upgraded ID3 and will be their first front wheel drive on their MEB platform. They had unveiled their ID Life concept back in 2021, but the 2 All appears to be replacing that one entirely. The exterior appears to take inspiration from the VW Beetle and Golf, but the interior features a new minimalistic design. It has a 12.9 inch front touch display with a new menu structure and a new steering wheel design with scroll wheels. This car is expected to achieve a 0 to 60 in under 7 seconds and can be fast charged to 80% in under 20 minutes. Though the full details have not been released there and it's still in the concept phase. They said they'll be unveiling the production version of this car for European markets by 2025. What's funny about this update is that while it doesn't seem to relate to Tesla, everyone is relating it directly to Tesla. We see headlines like VW beats Tesla to the punch and unveils an affordable electric vehicle. VW and GM are passing Tesla in the race to sell affordable EVs and many more. The crazy thing about this is that the only thing VW has beaten Tesla to is publishing vehicle renders. This is, by VW's own definition, a concept car. That means they are not even close to production ready, and this is simply a vision of a cheap electric vehicle VW would like to make. They have an anticipated range for it and say the ID2 all shows where we want to take the brand. Again though, this is a concept and VW doesn't plan to produce it until 2025. Instead, they plan to unveil the production version of it in European markets by 2025. On top of that, VW currently has no plans to bring this car to the US, Tesla's main market. At the same time, VW unveiled the ID1 concept. The ID1 will be even smaller and more affordable, reportedly starting around just $20,000. It looks like it'll be VW's BEV version of the Polo and will deliver with a choice between a 38 kilowatt hour or 58 kilowatt 
kilowatt hour battery. To start at $20,000 though, you'll likely have to opt for the smaller battery. Another concept, and it's another demonstration of the vast difference between a concept car and a scaled EV that is readily available. Tesla is likely going to be making their $25,000 EV in 2025 or 2026 and plans to do so at their new factory in Mexico. So while plenty of articles are using Tesla for SEO and it's understandable, nobody has beaten Tesla to anything here. Tesla is profitable on electric cars. GM is hoping to be profitable by 2025. Tesla is hoping to make nearly 2 million EVs this year alone. GM hopes to make 400,000 EVs in North America from 2022 through the first half of 2024 and grow capacity to 1 million units annually in North America in 2025. We don't have the exact numbers here from VW themselves, but we know that they are hoping to be profitable on EVs earlier than expected. This is something that is absolutely paramount if they will actually release a $27,000 affordable concept EV. So Tesla hasn't unveiled their affordable EV because they are waiting until they truly know how to build one at scale profitably. VW has unveiled two affordable concept EVs, and while that's very exciting, it doesn't actually mean that much. Once I can buy one in the US, I'll consider Tesla Beat. Next up today, a round steering wheel retrofit for the Model S and X is now available for purchase and installation. Pretty recently, Tesla started offering the round steering wheel alongside the yoke on new Model S's and X's in their configurator, and we've already seen that steering wheel on a Model S in their showroom. Now it looks like Tesla will be offering that option on older Model S's and X's as well, and you can order one through the Tesla app for $700, including installation by Tesla service technicians. Unfortunately, it already shows that they're out of stock, so this option was a little more popular than Tesla must have expected. While we for that to come back in stock, Tesla has released a new version of their app with a number of really great features. These come with app version 4.19 and not a Tesla app notes a few major improvements. They've made a few improvements to charging, including Tesla will display the portion of the battery that is unavailable due to the battery pack's cold temperature directly in the charging slider. The tick marks that are displayed at 10% intervals are now always visible. Previously, they were only displayed when the slider was being moved. They've also added the ability to drive on sunshine. Tesla solar owners can automatically start charging their car using excess solar when available. This should help reduce cost and improve electricity transmission efficiency. They have also added the charging membership option when charging a non-Tesla, full details of which we'll likely get soon, and then they've added minor fixes. It's another demonstration of how much your Tesla ownership experience can improve over time. Next up today, the Model Y continues to climb the ranks on its way to becoming the world's best-selling vehicle. Sawyer Merritt made a chart of the top 10 selling cars worldwide in 2022. He reports that the Model Y was the only vehicle in the top six to actually grow its sales in 2022, plus 88% year over year. Expected to be number one worldwide in terms of both revenue and unit sales in 2023. Of those top 10, the Model Y is the only fully electric option and has been the most widely available EV for a while now, so these numbers make sense. In Germany, the Model Y became their second best-selling car in February after the VW Golf. The Model Y had 6,442 registrations, and the Golf had 7,655. As they continue to ramp Giga Berlin and Giga Texas, I wouldn't be surprised to see them take that number one spot in 2023. VW is planning to release several new affordable EVs by 2025, though, so competition is coming. At Giga Berlin, Tesla has submitted its environmental application to expand that factory to 1 million vehicles per year. By the end of 2022, Tesla announced they had reached 3,000 cars per week there, which was a rate 2,000 cars short of the goal that they had been aiming for by that time. Last month though, that rate was already up to 4,000. Now that 5,000 cars per week is the next milestone, they're looking to the future. The factory is currently approved for a production rate of 500,000 cars per year, and they're looking to double that. In Europe overall, the Model Y was the best-selling EV in January. According to GATO Dynamics, new registrations for all vehicle segments increased by 11% year over year to 907,000 across the 27 countries the company monitored. While EVs still make up a relatively small percentage of the market, it is growing. The Model Y's popularity makes sense because across the board, SUVs now make up 51.3% of the market there, with that segment seeing a 14% increase in registrations in January. The BEV segment also expanded by 14% year over year. In China, the Model Y remains the top-selling premium SUV, though not the best-selling EV overall. Tesla held its own in the new electric vehicle segment there, with the Model Y taking first place with 25,526 units sold, and the Model 3 taking third with 8,000 
3,397 units sold. That's for vehicles priced between $29,000 and $44,000. In the segment for cars priced between thirty and 40000 the BYD Song took first place with 29,931 vehicles. Altogether, the Model Y comes in second place, and the Model 3 barely makes the top 10. These numbers are still impressive, but there is stiff competition over in China, specifically from BYD. Next up today, we've been hearing rumors that Tesla and BYD would be ending their battery partnership. Tesla and BYD have been working together for battery supply, but since then, BYD has become a fierce competitor in China. Recently, the Korean Economic Daily reported industry sources saying Tesla has not asked BYD for an additional supply of batteries for certain Tesla Model 3 vehicles after their supply deal expired earlier this year. According to a Reuters report, though, both Tesla and BYD have denied this report. Elon himself said that media report is false. Relations between Tesla and BYD are positive. Then BYD said in a statement to Reuters that the report is not in line with the actual situation. BYD's executive vice president told Chinese state-owned broadcaster CGTN in June that BYD was preparing to supply Tesla with batteries very soon. Since then, though, neither company has officially announced any deals. Overall, this is good news for Tesla because BYD is one of only a handful of companies that can supply LFP cells, which is the technology that Tesla is currently dependent on to reach their production goals, especially for their cheaper, more popular standard range vehicles. I'll keep you posted on how this ends up developing. That's all the latest Tesla news for today, so in the meantime, if you want to see the latest for the Cybertruck and Tesla Solar, you can check out that video linked up here or in the description below. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.